let's talk about how linear functions will come up in different applications and word problems. So something to keep in mind is just the basics of our linear functions. So again, that f of x equals mx plus b. So m is our slope. So you want to think of that as some rate of change. Or like in terms of word problems, this is something like miles per hour or dollars per hour. And <laughs> I realized that hour, dollars per minute. Basically that word per in there often relates to a slope or rate of change. And then B, which is our y-intercept, is often some initial value, so some starting value. So let's see how those wordings can come up in our word problem. So we have a company purchased $120,000 in new office equipment. They expect the value to depreciate by $16,000 per year. I'm going to just emphasize per there. Find a linear model for the value, then find and interpret the horizontal intercept and determine a reasonable domain and range for this function. So you have three things to do there. Let's start with finding our linear model. So in terms of the value of this office equipment, it's starting at that $120,000 and then it's going to depreciate, which means decrease by $16,000 per year. So let's talk about our variables. We're going to have a variable for time passing. So let's use T for time in years. And then our output, or what we're trying to calculate, is the value of this equipment. So let's use V for value, which is in dollars. So we want to find V of T. So what's the value if we input some amount of time that passes? So the value starting at $120,000, and then it's going to go down. So this depreciation by 16000 since it's decreasing, that's going to be negative. So we would take off 16000 each year. So in terms of a linear function, we're going to have 120000 minus 16000 t. So that if time is 0, the value is $120,000. If we plug in t equals 1, so 1 year has passed, we're taking out $16,000. If 2 years have passed, we take out $32,000. So that's working exactly how we want it to. So we answered one part of our question of finding the linear model. Let's go ahead and find the horizontal intercept. Let's do that over here. So horizontal intercept is the same thing as the x-intercept. So this is where y equals 0. Or in this case, what it would mean is value equals zero. So basically, we're looking for when does this office equipment not have value anymore. So we're looking for zero equals 120,000 minus 16,000 T. Let's go ahead and add 16,000 T to both sides to make it all positive. And then we'll divide by 16,000. And that's going to give us t equals 7.5. So we ended up with an amount of time. And it's the amount of time that's going to pass before the value is 0. So we could say the value will be $0 after 7.5 years. All right. Okay, domain and range. So remember, domain relates to our input values, which in this case is years. And then range relates to the output values, which in this case is value. So that's the amount of money and value. So in terms of domain, what are years basically that makes sense to look at here? So negative years isn't going to mean anything here, so I don't want to go to the negative side of things. And then also we don't really need to 
track value anymore after it's worth zero dollars. We would just know that like it's not worth anything anymore, so we wouldn't think of selling it. We wouldn't think of it as holding value, and it's not going to hold negative value. So basically the domain that I'm interested in is from year zero until year 7.5 when this equipment doesn't have value anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and use a bracket and start at zero and include zero, and then go to 7.5 and use a bracket because we'll include that 7.5 there. And then in terms of value, we know this kind of maximum value of 120,000 and then we're tracking it until it's worth nothing. <laughs> so with this, we're gonna go ahead and start our interval at zero, and we'll look at it going up to 120,000, and we'll include those endpoints. All right, let's talk about cost, revenue, and profit in terms of business applications. So total cost, when we're Thinking of this in terms of linear functions, there are two pieces that come together and we kind of saw it here, even though we were talking about value, it was like there was this fixed cost, like there was this value or fixed value of $120,000, but then there was this variable piece that changed year to year of how it was decreasing. Same thing happens with cost. So what we're gonna do here is total cost, I'm gonna write TC for short, and that is equal to taking some fixed cost plus some variable cost times the quantity of items that we have. We're gonna look at an example with this right down below here, but I just want to get this in here, but notice this is the same idea as initial value of y-intercept, variable cost, so it's changing year to year, is our slope. So that's coming from some rate of change. And this variable q that I'm introducing, and we're going to see this quite a bit this term, represents quantity, so it's like the number of items. So that's where it differs from um, that last question, is that the idea is the total cost of some sort of production, it depends on how many of an item you produce. So we'll see that down below here. Revenue, so we're gonna get another variable here for P, which is gonna represent price. So revenue is the amount of money that we're bringing in. So often, if we're selling some number of items for a certain price, if you multiply those together, that'll give you the revenue. Uh, so this relates to the idea of sales. What's coming in from sales? So R equals P times Q. And then profit is going to come from, so we make our sales, we have this revenue coming in, but we also need to pay our costs that we're incurring. So profit is coming from the difference of those two. So profit is equal to revenue minus total cost. Okay, lots of notation there, some different ideas. Let's take a look at it within an actual application and see how it all comes together. So we have a tech startup is looking at developing and launching a new mobile app. Initial development of the app will cost $300,000 and they estimate marketing and support for each customer will cost 50 cents. Notice the word cost coming up in there. So cost of the $300,000, and then each user will have a cost of 50 cents. While the app will be free, they estimate that they will be able to bring in $2 per user on average from in-app purchases. So that's money coming in. So that's going to link to revenue. In fact, let's go ahead and write revenue in there. Okay. How many users will the company need to break even? Break even is the idea of not operating at a profit nor a loss. Basically, your total cost is going to be equal to your revenue, 
or think of it as profit being zero. If you're bringing in the same amount of money that's going out, that's the idea of breaking even. Okay, so we want to see when will total cost equal the revenue. So first we need to put some functions together. So let's talk about the total cost. So they had this cost of $300,000 and then a cost of 50 cents per user. So remember when I was talking about total cost up here, this idea of a fixed cost and a variable cost. So they'll have to pay this 300,000, but that's just once, that's not changing. But then there's this added cost of 50 cents per user, and let's go ahead and call that Q. So we're gonna call Q the number of users, it's the quantity. So with that, we have our total cost. So if there's one user, we have that $300,000 plus 50 cents from that one user. And then we could just keep adding on as more and more users come on. Okay, the revenue. So up above, we saw revenues coming from the price times the quantity. So we should be getting $2 per user on average. So we're gonna take that $2, that's that price times the number of users, which is Q. So total, um, sorry, revenues coming from two times Q. And we want to see where these two equations are equal to each other. So we're going to take 300,000 plus 0.5Q equals 2Q. And subtract 0.5Q from both sides. So we're going to have 300,000 equals 1.5Q, divide both sides by 1.5, and Q is going to equal 200,000. So the company needs, let's make our sentence, the company needs 200,000 users in order to break even. So this is often like a company goal because typically with like a low number of users or low quantity, you're typically operating at a loss. You would be, your costs would be outweighing the revenue. But then you have this point where you're breaking even, and then if you can go beyond that break even point, so like in this case, if they start getting more than 200,000 users, what typically happens is they start operating at a profit. So that means they're bringing in more money from revenue than they're incurring from total costs.